All right, so I got a lot of things in the pipeline at the moment. Um, myself and uh, you know I, my the board of directors of TCR, <laughs> we uh we've been working on a. Uh, A podcast of our own nice so we're going to be working on that we're that's strictly going to be youtube uh we're not really going to put it on twitch we're we're gonna record do everything offline and and actually have like a little production set up for it cool. um first off everybody coming in welcome to the laying it down podcast this is a podcast for all things wrestling where we bring on wrestling content creators and wrestling fans to have discussions about everything going on in the wrestling world tonight's guest is mike gambino also known as the champ tcr that belt guy mike gambino also has a <laughs> sneaker instagram and a and a martial arts instagram too he is a jack of all trades so we're going to be talking ah. with him tonight I keep it busy. <laughs> he definitely keeps it busy. So for everybody that's coming in, that is in the chat, X Mage Point guest in the chat, if you want to go ahead and follow him. And you are more than welcome, guys, to ask whatever questions you'd like. I will try to ask them in the order that they come in and ask our guest of honor what they are. Um, with that being said, Mike, welcome in again. Um, I know a lot of people in chat may know who you are already, just like Dad Trainer does um, and Big Pat. Um, but for anybody that may not know who you are, feel f feel free to introduce yourself to the chat. Let them know who you are, what you do, and what got you into wrestling. Oof. All right. So this brings it back. I'm a little. I'm not that old, but you know, we're all probably in the same the same boat when it comes to age. Uh, I've. Well, my name is Mike Gambino, content creator from Queens, New York. I've uh, been doing wrestling content for years now. Uh, years, literally. Uh, been having a good time with it. Also, uh, so let's get straight to the question. I got into wrestling back in 1993 with my grandfather. Nice. My grandfather used to, my grandfather and my grandmother used to watch it all the time. And whenever my mom would drop me off at their house, I would watch it with my grandpa. And I guess a lot of us have this similar story, you know, after my grandfather passed away, I just continued watching it. And, um, when I was still, this was early 2000, then now getting into early 2000s, my aunt um, used to watch it, used to watch it with me as well. So my aunt that I used that I grew up with was a big wrestling fan, went to her house whenever I was there, she would have, she'd put it on and we watch it together. And I'll never forget, um, this is actually where it's, it's, I don't know. I don't want to throw up a trigger warning or anything. My aunt passed away of pancreatic cancer back in 2004. And uh, I'll never forget. It was a Thursday night. And I was in the room when she passed away. Oh, and man. I remember leaving the room, a complete wreck, going to sit in the waiting room, and SmackDown was on. Wow. So I, I got to watch SmackDown. It was like one of my, you know, like last time being able to, you know, Watch it with her, I guess, if you want to throw it out there, if, you know, if you believe that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but wrestling has always been part of my life, regardless of what stage of my life I've been in. And then even when my son was born, my son was born on a Thursday night, late, but that Friday night, we watched SmackDown. So it was the first time he got to watch TV. He really didn't watch it. He was in and out of sleep. <laughs> Less than 24 years old. But uh, we got to watch SmackDown together, so... That's awesome, man. And yeah, so wrestling's been in my life for a long time. <laughs> and I see all of these, like, Instagram reels now of, like, these parents, like, showing their kids wrestling now. You know, some yeah. of them throwing up the one, some of them liking some of the newer wrestlers that are coming in, loving Cody Rhodes, because, you know, Cody Rhodes is, like, a oh, family man and all that. Huge family guy. Huge family guy. So, like, I can see why WWE pushes him into that market, gives him, like, the belt, like, every time he walks through, like, the weightlifting belt. So, there's... Yeah, uh, I'm... I, you know, I can't wait for my son to be old enough, but I feel like I'm missing that window of him doing that belt thing. Mm. Cause I want to, I want to be in the front row with my kid. My kid's not, my yeah. kid's not even two yet, but I want to be like, yo, look, my kid, he's wearing a Cody shirt. How about you throw that, uh, that belt yeah, right. my way. <laughs> I actually have a story about that. I'm, you, I'm sure you probably saw it when I went to SmackDown, like back in December. You were right there. You were right in front row. Yeah. So the kid next to me, he was with his dad and he had a sign that said, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth 
and Cody Rhodes' belt. You saw it, yeah. And I saw that. When Cody Rhodes had his dark match after SmackDown went off the air, he gave him the belt. And, awesome, man. and when I like I saw Cody, like he gave me a quick glance, but then he looked at the kid. So as soon as it's like he looked at me, I pointed towards the kid. I was like, give him the belt. Give him the freaking yeah, belt. And then on TikTok, apparently awesome. the mother posted like a, a video of like the son and the dad getting the belt. They found me and said, thank you for pointing at my son. So what? that way he that's could get awesome. the belt. I was like, that's freaking crazy that how that happened like we showed up on the tiktok too like you see me pointing and then there's like a picture with cody that i was like on the side like you see half of my face or whatever like but, popped up like your little how you popped up yeah. out of it. Like we made it <laughs> someone tagged me in it too because i guess they were following him too or saw the hashtag it's crazy once you become a content creator for wrestling and you and you get to like you make your rounds and people get to see you and know you when you pop up on wwe mm-hmm. or wherever People just start tagging you out of nowhere. People you've never even met. They're just like, oh, look, I, you know, JLD, you're right here. Or, you know, look, oh, look, you just popped up on this guy's account. You get, you'll get tagged left and right. It's, it's, it's such a great community. There's a shitty side it, of it, of course, like yeah. everything. But the wrestling community is friggin' awesome on all platforms. And that was like the same with that, uh, when that, that Instagram page tagged me, with, that you and Luna Bombay like, tagged me on the Roman Reigns subway thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that was See, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> I was like, I oh, should I know this guy? Okay. Oh, You're making waves, bro. Keep it up. Don't stop. I appreciate take, that, man. Take it easy. Don't don't outdo yourself. Don't exhaust yourself. Don't run yourself to the ground. But just keep the steady pace. So I want to get into some of the questions in chat. So for chat, I'm not gonna be able to get to every single question because I do want to get through mine too. But I will try to get to the questions as they come through. So one of the first questions from Young Grasshopper Luke is, do you acknowledge JLD as your viewer's champion? Sure, sure. I, you know, I'll acknowledge JLD as my viewer's champion. Let him freaking know. That's a W, <laughs> that, that's a w acknowledgement right there. I don't acknowledge Roman Reigns, but I'll acknowledge JLD. <laughs> Fair enough. You, you got to do the J. The, the action figure in here, hear nothing. <laughs> yeah, like The Rock, the, the freaking L, or like the whole Jey Uso thing. Yeah, that's going to be something interesting when it plays out. <laughs> so dad trainer. So I know you you also know dad trainer. So I think you Another sort of, an- I know you answered this already, but um, in case he didn't hear, when is TCR coming back? Because we TCR are looking forward to it. We'll be coming back. Uh, I want to do a str- I want to do one final 2K23 stream, but my schedule is a little crazy right now. Um, but 2K24 is literally right around the block. So I think I'm going to come back and come back strong with 2K24. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also I want to plug one thing real quick. The month of April, I know it's WrestleMania month, but I'm, I'm going to be doing a like a charity event across all platforms for uh, testicular cancer awareness. Hell yeah. You know, I might as, you know, like, we, I don't think we get enough awareness for it so i'm and i'm gonna be pushing that so i'm gonna be streaming a little bit more during april so you'll see me a little bit more pop up so you pop up a little bit more if you want me to advertise that in any way if you're doing like testicular cancer awareness i'm more than happy to share it and hopefully bring people in with a good cause so that's a freaking awesome cause to yeah go for. I'll, if you want to talk about it offline or if we want to talk about it now you know it's completely up to you um yeah we can take, try to do it oh yeah, yeah. we'll talk we can about take it, it offline that's fine <laughs> Hell yeah, Dad Trainer. D- Dad Trainer, thank you for stopping in, by the way. I appreciate you for the oh, question. Really? Thanks for, uh, and Luke as well, thank you for the question. So I wanted to go into one of my questions next. Um, and I, I already know the answer to part, the second half of this question, but who is your favorite wrestler as well as who is your least favorite wrestler and why? All right, my favorite wrestler. Oh, I gotta stand up. Nice. Look at. Oh, that's a nice shirt too. That's the that's the AEW one, right? Yeah, that's the one that just they just dropped like last week. Hell yeah. Or like two weeks ago. Sting, all time favorite from day one. Um, okay, when I watched wrestling with my grandfather, it what we watched WWF. We didn't watch WCW. Mm-hmm. But um, but then you know, when Sting came out, I loved him with the with the surfer look. But then when he went full crow, I loved him even more. Um, yeah, Sting's my number one. 
And you know what? Roman Reigns isn't my least favorite wrestler. Oh, okay. He's not. He's not. <laughs> um, my least favorite less wrestler. I, I got to think about that one, but I'm not going to give it to Roman. I, you know, if I wanted to keep up the shtick, keep yeah. up the heat, I would say Roman right now. But I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. One of my least favorites had to have been probably the, the tag team, the Nasty Boys. Oh wow! What's the reason? Interesting. They were they were generally mean people. Okay. They were like rude in the ring, rude outside the ring. They got their ass handed to them when they went to WWE because of how like they always like portrayed themselves. Um. I, and I think I yeah I guess I would say I would just I'll stick with the Nasty Boys for now is my one of my least favorite. And you know what's crazy? Like we see all of these superstars in the ring. We think like we look forward to meeting them one day if we ever go mm-hmm. to a live event. Like Cody Rhodes might be the exception, but maybe we like meet another superstar and they end up being an asshole. Even though our whole lives we've been thinking like, oh, they're gonna be awesome. I look forward to them. And it's crazy how the saying goes. Like never meet your your hero like superheroes you're, or something like you're that you're right you you are 100 percent right you've met well you met you know john cena you've met a couple you've met a handful of people and you you've, you've even met sting right and they're probably all yeah. awesome they're all awesome i mean but like uh i have to say the one person i did meet though that I wasn't really nice was virgil oh wow he was a little bit of a dick <laughs> And what's crazy is like a lot of people will have like their opinions on like the wrestlers, but uh, yeah. it just takes that one time, one person to say, "Oh, so and so is an asshole," and then everybody's gonna have like or say the same thing, just to follow up with that. Until there's they also, actually... yeah, there's a video online of Scott Hall blowing up Virgil's spot at a um, at a wrestling convention. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's actually kind of funny. He's like, he just goes up to his table. He's looking at all of his pictures and stuff. He goes, so uh, to sell a, to sell a picture, you have to have my, you have to have me in it too. Like the only reason you could sell this stuff is because you're like portraying yourself with me oh. or other wrestlers. You know, like he can't do it on his own. And then at that point, you get you get the air horn, beep, 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 beep. get him out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Scott Hall was Scott Hall was something else. It, it all and the- it comes with it comes with the territory too. You know, like. In some aspects, you don't have to be completely rude, you know, but like, you know, I've met a bunch of wrestlers throughout my life. Bret Hart, one of the top notch guys. Nice. Meeting him was one of the, one of the best experiences ever. Cesaro, same thing with Cesaro. Amazing wow. dude. Oh, I forgot you met Cesaro. That's, that was, yeah. was that a wrestling universe? Yes, it was at Wrestling Universe. Because I was like, that looks familiar. Like when I yeah, like when I went to go see Kane, like seeing that background, it's like almost iconic now. Every time yeah, yeah. I see some kind of wrestler, like with that with that action figure wall, I'm just like, oh shit, they were there. Yep. And yeah, that's another spot that's that's completely I guess I don't know what it was. Maybe COVID got everyone loving wrestling again and now it's like at the very end and people are going back to events. Dude, and dude. it's like that's another spot that just blew up dude wrestling as a whole just became mainstream like especially Damn. now that's wrestlemania season's coming you know everybody like that like is a part of pop culture is gonna like watch at least res- wrestlemania for the year even if they don't watch anything else they are watching it's like wrestlemania it's literally super bowl for wrestling yeah. but like 100%. like you you saw like that i think it was like an instagram slideshow of like all those celebrities wearing the snoop dogg title i think it was like chloe kardashian pat mahomes and everybody belt. dude it's so nice it's so belt. beautiful <laughs> i want that belt so bad <laughs> maybe they'll do maybe they'll put it on sale again like in the wwe well, shop supposedly they're gonna have it at wrestlemania at the superstore Okay. okay. Uh, but it's gonna be it's gonna have WrestleMania side plates. That's what the rumor is. It's gonna be similar to the Snoop Dogg, but not a hundred percent. But it's gonna have, it's gonna be a WrestleMania version. Because I think those side plates are one of one, right? Like that's the only Snoop Dogg ones. Or did they sell it at one point? No, they did sell it. They did sell okay. it. I know a couple of people who have it, but I don't think they made that many. Got it. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, Snoop Dogg is Snoop Dogg. He's the freaking goat. The fact that he defeated the Miz, I, I will give it to him though. Great freaking job to Snoop Dogg for coming in when he did after shane mcmahon's knee mishap so like big respect to him for that no he you know what it is he's an entertainer and he understands cues 
Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of the wrestling, you know, scene. The wrestling, it's how to, you know, it's like understanding cues, going through with it, and not like hesitating. Mm-hmm. He didn't do, didn't hesitate, didn't mess up, saved the moment, and and now he's immortalized because of it. And everybody's gonna remember that WrestleMania where he did that that elbow drop onto the Miz, got the win. Horrible. Boom. Oh yeah, Left horrible wrestling. elbow drop. But it was still good. <laughs> Cause it was that leap. Like he did the leap and jumped. It was so it was funny, yeah. but it was good. So it was He's an entertaining so moment. <laughs> he is. But it was it was a good moment. But like big respect to him for that. Cause like yeah. I, if I was Snoop Dogg at that moment, I would have been like, what, what do I do now? What do I do? Do I just let it happen? Uh, do I let Shane get up? <laughs> he broke his he, he tore his like he tore his kneecap. What what uh yeah, it's it's definitely one of those moments where you gotta like, oh I gotta quickly figure something out it definitely comes along with the with the entertainment industry though so i definitely get that plus you know acting and stuff like that's how that's how it goes down yeah yeah you always got to be ready for the you have to be ready for the unknown okay um young grasshopper luke asks who was your most hated wrestler going up so i'm assuming the nasty boys right that would be well, the... no growing up hulk hogan hollywood hogan Oh, Hollywood Hogan. Okay. Hollywood Hogan is one of my 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 worst. He, I hated him through and through because because he never lost. Um, <laughs> and he uh, was super and he Hogan. Was, and, and whenever Sting almost beat him, something had to have ha- always got interrupted. And I, I can't stand that. From back in the day, it still bothers me. And like. Even like going from like the immortal Hulk Hogan from like the 80s and 90s to Hollywood Hogan, it almost seems like when he became Hollywood Hogan, it was just he just wanted the clout. Like that that was the 90s yeah. version of wanting clout. Whether it was spray- actually, you know what? I'm gonna take away the nasty boys. I'm gonna say Hogan's my word. My my my. I hate. Mo- I guess Hogan's probably top top spot of me not liking some a wrestler. There you go. Boom boom boom. <laughs> I mean, Chavo Guerrero. When I met him, his uh, personification was an egotistical douche, but he was as chill as can be. So that was from Uzi. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I've heard. I've heard about Chavo about that. I've heard about that. I wonder if it has to do with like, like, just being in WWE, just in general. Like, oh, I was in the WWE, or if it had anything to do with Eddie or whatever. Yeah, I was just, what what timeline was it? Was it pre Eddie passing? Was it after Eddie passing? Was he get hounded by? Was he getting hounded by any questions? Like, there's a lot to go to go with Chavo. Yeah. But then again, if you're a wrestler, especially like the Mexican wrestlers who, like the luchadors who live, breathe, and that is them, the ego go goes with it. Right. Plus, you I know, like in a way, I also feel for him. Like, I saw the Dark Side of the Ring, the episode with Eddie, and like how he was like one of the last people to like interact with him while he was unfortunately passing, like in his in his There's bathroom. In there, man, he was the it only. Sucks. You know, that's heartbreaking. Definitely heartbreaking. heartbreaking. And I and I feel for him for that. Um, but I hope that's not one of the reasons. Like, if that's the case where he is like sort of like a a douche, that I hope that's not because of that. But. Only, only they know how they are. We, we will never fully understand the human mind yeah. of, of those of those superstars. And then on the other end, kayfabe. There's such a thin line with kayfabe. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's real and what's not anymore, or at all with wrestling. Literally, like the way wrestling <laughs> is now, we feel like everything's a work. Like we don't know if it's like for the cameras or if it's literally Dude. happening. Like you know, even least- injuries now, even injuries now. Yeah, like at least back in the day, we didn't have social media to blur that line even more. Mm-hmm. You know, now you have social media and it's all over the place, and they're keeping up the shtick throughout all social media. So it's like, I don't, I, I, it's that's how good it is though. It's because you just still can't tell. There's a huge difference now, anyway, from like how kayfabe is now if it's even real now versus like back in the 90s and the 80s where like you said there's no social media so these ca- these superstars can literally stay in character the whole time and make us really feel like oh hulk yeah. hogan really hated andre the giant oh macho man was really going after hogan or like scott hall versus michaels was really them going on a freaking ladder. Andre really hated hogan though <laughs> 
Bro, the story, <laughs> the stories I've heard with Andre, but I have yet to see the documentary though. I meant to watch it for years. I just never had the yeah. chance. The HBO one is really good. Um, <laughs> it's very depressing at certain points because mm. it explains like how uncomfortable he was always. He was always yeah. Um, and how like he just it, it was it was rough. It was rough being that big. And like I could just imagine the flights, man. Like. The, the chairs, like, trying to eat, Everything. drink, and all that. Like, from, yeah. like, you know, one of the stories is that, like, it he can drink, like, gallons and gallons of beer and not get drunk. Like, it, that's how big he was. And it, There was, like, a time I think he drank, like, 22 bottles of wine at dinner, and it didn't oh even taste him. Oh, my God. The, 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 like, the, I have one glass, and I'm, like, tipsy. <laughs> one, freak, one freaking sip, and I'm just like, oh, wait a minute. But I definitely got to watch one of these days. The, uh... Definitely take time to watch it. If I had HBO, though, I mean, I have I have apps I could find, so <laughs> I could definitely <laughs> watch it. I could definitely watch it somewhere. Um, where's my OBS? Um, okay. So your belt collection, I definitely have to ask about that because that is one of the most unique things that I've ever seen in my freaking life. Like I've seen belt collections like on TikTok and Instagram and all that, but like, first of all, what got you into wanting to collect belts? Because they are okay. they are amazing. So thank you. I greatly appreciate it. This is a work in progress. It's always been a work in progress. Um, back in the day, to the early mid '90s, late '90s, when they made the foam belts, mm -hmm. I got the Intercontinental, the World Heavyweight Championship, and the Smoking Skull title all at the same time. Nice. I thought I was like in heaven. It was Christmas. Got all three belts. I there's a picture of me of wearing all three belts too and i think it's actually in my discord somewhere i'll mm. send i'll send it to you later yeah, yeah but uh but i recreated the picture with me holding the the real belts oh down. hell yeah <laughs> that's a w yeah and uh ever since then i always wanted a belt and then again i also always wanted to be a wrestler there was so it was always the two like the two things right like i said earlier wrestling's always been a big part of my life um so the belts though back in the day they were expensive i never really i couldn't you know my parents couldn't afford it so you know i had to do with foam which was, of course i you know greatly appreciated and all and then i bought my first belt back in 2005 i want to say it was either four or five my first through uh, my first belt was the big eagle big eagle's a classic yeah the big eagle with wwf on it it was a WWF Big Eagle, uh, figs, figs edition. So it's a very thin plate. It's a two millimeter plate. But it was authentic. Then I got a WWF Winged Eagle, also figs, mint condition. And then um, I got a Smoking Skull WWF. All three classic logos, two scratch logos. The, w, the Winged Eagle had the block logo, WWF on it. Highly sought after. I still have them in my collection. Those three I will never get rid of. Um, and then from there, I just never stopped buying. And like those are hard to get now too. The WWF scratched ones. Those are like insane to try and find. You can get the WWE version in the shop, but like to find the WWF is like and it's it's hard. It's hard to find. It's hard to find in good condition. Um, yes. And then I have a. If you could see right here. You see the cruiserweight? I have the cru yeah, I have yeah, yeah. cruiserweight I see right it. there. That's actually one of my first belts, too. That's a WW. So when the invasion angle happened, right. that belt actually is a WWF belt. So like WWF introduced WCW titles for one year under the F logo, and that's a WCW cruiserweight, but with a WWF logo on the back. Got it. Another rare, another rare sighting. And like th those go for like big money at the moment, so like I think it's in your best interest to just keep them. Like yeah, and I've had them for twenty years now. I've been collecting Sheesh, for 20, I, I've yeah. been collecting for about twenty nineteen twenty years now. So that's they're not going anywhere. <laughs> that's insane, man. I remember my first wrestling belt. I think was the foam, uh, big gold title, the the WWE World title, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, foam yeah. version. And I think I bought the Undertaker and Muhammad Hassan. Um, no, no, it was it was the Muhammad Hassan Davari action figure set, 
I bought the big gold foam belt. And then like I bought the Undertaker themed ring that came with the Undertaker and the casket. Like a paper, oh. like a cardboard paper casket. And it was it was the best day of my life because I finally got to live out my dream of playing with wrestling action figures. <laughs> yup, and it's just a, and and even to today. I still buy action figures all the time. I have so many fucking action figures. You could tell, like, if you look in the, I see in the shelves, you could see them. <laughs> yeah, I see them there, too. Um, I had a, a lot for a while. I ended up just giving them away to my cousin back in high school, like my younger cousin. But now the only action figure I own is your tribal chief. That's it. <laughs> oh, you have the Rocks figure? Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh no, he's like, he's not the tribal chief. The tribal chief is below him. Oh he's my a, god, he's a high chief. <laughs> he is the high chief. All right, I give the rock that because like he just kind of went into the bloodline with his Versace vest, and you know what? Took high chief, the ro freaking Rock Johnson, and and just ran with it. Yo, when Rock came out back in the day with his five hundred dollars shirt on, which was basically the Versace shirt of today, he was, it was epic. It was and it was just as good as now. Like it's like the rock coming back is causing such a rift. It's and and I just hope it doesn't hurt him for like, you know, like is Disney is Disney push. Yeah. He's like, I don't I don't want people to, like Disney to think, oh, he's such an asshole now. Let's, you know, cancel him or whatever. But that's that's where the the kayfabe has to come in. Listen, The Rock, like, as much as we are, like, ugh about The Rock because of the whole We Want Cody thing, or if, like, we we have all our feelings about The Rock right now returning to wrestling, but one thing is for sure, and that The Rock is amazing on the mic, he is fantastic at what he does, he is doing this for a reason, and I'm looking forward to what happens with, like, him and the Bloodline. I actually have a video that I want to make of how I think he's secretly planning the demise of the Bloodline. I am right there with you. I completely agree. Uh, I think, I don't know if he's planning it, but I feel he's inserted himself so much where it's causing a rift. And I want to say either Heyman is going to give Roman the idea of he's invading our territory and causing more mayhem there. Cause you know how, mm -hmm. you know how Heyman yeah. is. I'm a Heyman guy. I love Paul Heyman. Um, or it's just going to be, they're just going to start butting heads and they're not going to see eye to eye. And we're going to see, I just hope it's going to come out to be a good match. You know, mm -hmm. the rock seemed a little winded coming back the other day. So especially with, uh, the gender hole beat up back at, uh, day one, yeah. he looked a little that was, tired. That was rough. That was a little rough. <laughs> we'll see. Keltris, welcome in Zach. I didn't get to say hi to you. Hello. Um, I see your question. Oh, Thank yet. you for the question. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, so only good vibes ask the question. Um, top five, top five good wrestlers and top five worst wrestlers. So we kind of went over one, uh, like your favorite and your least favorite. Do you have like a top five of your favorite and maybe even a top five of your least favorite? Which we probably fave. Um, I'm not going to include Sting because you know he's above there. So it gives me a little bit. Maybe gives me a little, you know six. Uh, Stone Cold Triple H obviously. Um, who else? Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero. Those four, definitely. W choices. And uh, and I'm gonna throw a current day one, who doesn't get too much um credit. Shinsuke, he's probably he's he's, he's a workhorse there. man. He is definitely a workhorse. I respect and, him. Yeah, he deserves way more than he's been given. Um, I feel that he he deserves more though. He does. He deserves way more. I think every live event that I've went to last year had him in a dark match. It's so it was upsetting. versus Cody. Um, the the day after Christmas was him and Cody in a bull rope match before they like actually did a televised version a few weeks ago. They had Shinsuke versus Rollins, I think like two times when I went. Like for Rollins the world title. Rollins and, is up there too. He's he's pretty he's pretty good too, but I'm leaving the champions out. Yeah, yeah, I, I got for, it. For one reason or the next, you know? <laughs> so I, I actually like this question from Luke. Um, is, there, is there any belt that you actually regret buying? Regret? If any, if any. If, it, if you don't, it could be none. Um, 
honestly, there really isn't a belt I regret. Yeah, no, I don't have any regrets about buying any belts. That's I, bad too. I wouldn't either. I, yeah, because then I feel <laughs> I don't. I have no guilt in purchasing even more, you know. But I have no guilt on any purchase on any belt that I've purchased. Bro, if I had unlimited money, I'd probably look the same as yours. I'd be buying all of them. I, I'd be on shop right now. All of them this in the car. Tw- this is twenty years. A worth of collecting. Mm-hmm. And there's still so many more I want, and as this isn't. I still have another twenty in in storage, by the way. And I know you're in the process of selling some of them too, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be selling some belts, uh, and some of like <laughs> memorabilia and stuff that I have, some figures that I have just <laughs> laying around, because it's like I have so much, so much that like I'm not gonna sell the ones I love, but I'll sell the ones. You know, sell some, some of them, yeah. I got you. There, you know? Is that the uh, UK title that's to your right on the couch? Yes, that is the UK belt. Do I see it? I'm going to grab it real quick. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, Dude, it is. What kills me is this belt is beautiful and that they, this should have been like the WWE championship. Me wants it. While we're doing this, feel free to type exclamation point guest in the chat. Let the world uh, follow Mike Gambino, W content creator, W belt collection, W person. So if you haven't done so already, go follow him on Twitch. Go follow him everywhere. This is, uh, this is top tier, what we're seeing right here. I have a fun, like, I have a story for that, too, that that UK title. First of all, it is absolutely amazing, like you said. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. It is, I don't know why they couldn't get go with a design similar to, like, mm-hmm. this for the actual WWE Championship. And now, just <laughs> notice, this is the WWE UK, not the NXT UK. UK. Right, because there's, a, there's a difference. Yeah, it was originally WWE, and then they changed it over to NXT. Yeah. The, uh, there was one Friday where wwe had a surprise flash sale i think i messaged you about it i don't remember or maybe or i think i got it from you actually you might have announced it on your discord i went i was at the gym i saw the replica for 130 dollars i was that was yeah I was like, I'll wait till I get home. I was in the middle of working out. As soon as I got home, gone. Dude, I know. I was so sad. <laughs> so so now I've realized being in group talks and group to group texts, group chats, group forums and wrestling forums and like I there's a there's a forum called Belt Talk that has been around like now it's a Facebook group, but prior to that, it was a forum had its own website and I was in it back in like early uh late 2000s mid 2000s right and uh, they always post when their sales but now they were saying how Walmart had the ruthless aggression tag team title for $170 now the trick is though you have to go if you search on Walmart if you click on the belt you have to make sure it's being sold by fanatics yes because it's through them because I know fanatics Cause... sells them too yeah so so if it goes if it's sold by fanatics it's 100 percent real because there's a bunch of other companies the that try to like yeah they're, they're not their real in there that uh that that get away with it but and then i i, I lost out on that one which kind of was upsetting and then when that same sale i missed out the on the randy orton title because that was 150 Ooh, 150 that was upsetting. Oh, and the triple h big eagle oh was also God. 150 the ones I saw on, that were on sale on Walmart, like directly through Fanatics, was the different colored leather belts of the. I forgot if it was the the Winged Eagle or the yeah. Yeah, it was the Winged Eagle because the blue one. My my co- I I sent the blue one to my cousin because he ended up purchasing that one. And like I, I think I was at the time I was just like bro I, it was too much money at the time because I think I had spent on Christmas and all that so I was like you know what as much as I want to get it um it's probably okay good. I'll be fine. Like, I don't need to get another belt right now. I'll get another Listen, belt soon, but... There's always there's always Klarna, you know? There's always Klarna. <laughs> True, but, yo, I, like... I give so... I, so I, give, <laughs> I give my fiancé so much shit about afterpay and all that. I'm like, just, like, if you have... If you don't have the money right now, don't buy it. Like, just... Yeah. just Wait till you have enough. You can afford the funds, then just pay it in one shot. That's just how I am. My mindset. Everybody has their own mindset, but like I'm just like, nah, I can't do these after pay some stuff. That's the best. Two. That's the best mindset to have when it comes to collecting, though, because if you have my mindset, you just keep buying. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then you're stuck with a room like this. I mean, I ain't gonna argue about that though. That's a it's, it's a W room. I also know that the uh, that WWE title all the way to your to your right is a customized leather one, right? Which one? Uh, the one next to the big gold. That one. Yes. Yes. So oh, that is a universal, and all the so I'll give you a little, I'll give you I'll give you a little secret. It is is an insert in it. Ooh, so what oh, I did? Okay, okay, I got you. What I, I did going. was go to Amazon, get yourself a roll of fake skin, fake snake yeah. skin, whatever color. Six, what is it, like eight dollars? Cut it out to the size of the W, the background. And boom. Next to it, you don't see it though, but I have the the WWE, the one that you have back there. Yeah. And I have regular snakeskin on it. And I have stone cold side plates. I think I saw that too. I think you may have posted yeah. about that. But hell yeah. Buy two, resell one. Also true. And I have I have blue snakeskin for the blue universal, which is Right yeah, yeah, I see it. I know the lighting kind of covers the the blue a little bit, but I see it. I, I definitely see it. Um, also, yeah, only good vibes got to because uh, only good vibes lives in Lebanon, but he's in Saudi Arabia right now, so he got to see the experience. Um, yes. yesterday, he he put pictures on the Discord if you want to go check it out later on. Oh, we'll definitely but check it, out it looked this. really nice, like Always all the stuff out go. there. But it's like so expensive flights and stuff, and like I just don't see myself going there right now. Everything's expensive right now, man. Just, Wait till you could when, once you could, you're able to write it off, then go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Once once we make it to the big leagues and we're we out here, then we could be like, yo, we making vlogs of the experience and all that. Exactly. I'm going there for work. All right. He said you hear that fiance. He's buying it for work. <laughs> exactly. Right off. Keep the receipt though. TurboTax is gonna be knocking on our door <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> and make copies of the receipts. Make copies of the receipts. Have the email. Email the receipt. Whatever you gotta do, just so you have it there ready. Cause that that experience plus flights round trip, FBI open up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How the hell did you pay for this? I swear it's through Klarna. <laughs> <laughs> Klarna. Oh my lord. <laughs> That's like a 10 year payment. <laughs> Literally 10 years just for that one trip. Be like, um, be like, JLD, what's, uh, what's, uh, Saudi Arabia Airlines? When did you go? Yeah, 10 years ago. <laughs> why, uh, why is, um, why did you get first class seats? <laughs> <laughs> bro, have you seen Emirates first class seats, bro? Um, insane. That's, insane. That is a life dream to be able to get on that thing. It's a whole suite. Literally. Like literally sliding sliding doors you get your own like reclining thing you get the tv you get a shower appointment ridiculous how long is the flight from jfk it's about like 12 to 13 hours direct to, I to really dubai need to shower <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely i ain't trying to get off the airplane and custom smell like the old, like onions and shit <laughs> landing over there at least <laughs> especially welcome back moxie i appreciate you oh man um so dad trainer asked which belt was your first belt well which i the, believe the which big, i believe yeah it was a big eagle yeah that yeah. answers that um eddie asks in an alternate universe you're headlining wrestlemania who are you facing who am i facing yep headlining wrestlemania i would say randy orton i would say randy orton he'll definitely make you look good he's randy orton first of all randy orton is in his freaking prime right now. This man is looking great. This is his second prime. He's Literally, like, this there's is a second, second prime. I didn't know there could be a second prime in the WWE, but <laughs> Randy, Randy Orton could do it. <laughs> literally proven otherwise. RKO's left and right, and like I gotta give it to him. Whatever he was doing during injury, it's really helped out. I'm sure his wife and his kids are big supporters of his anyway, so that like emotionally helps him and all that, and they support his craft, but. If you had to knock JLD out with any one of your I belts, which one would oh, I swear to God, Moxie? I got the perfect belt. Hold on, hold on. I'll show oh you which one. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I forgot about that belt, but it's freaking fire. My Let's NYC see. title, bro. The New York City Championship. <laughs> so, for those who have never been to New York before, the the main plate on that belt 
is the original token that people would use to get onto the New York City subway. Before there were Metro cars, before there was the tap to pay, that was how you got in. My parents have stories of like, so many coin washers just using that to get through the turnstiles not using the coins and it was such a different time versus now but yeah man. it's such a fire belt like actually let's let me ask you this what inspired that belt besides new york so i've always so i always wanted to do you know i i have my custom tcr title it's up there right now it's like yeah yeah on reserve um and i always wanted something different and I always wanted to get something like I want to make my Italy championship belt because I'm Italian. I wanted my New York title because I don't, you know, I've never seen a New York championship. And uh, I'm like, my, I, so my idea behind this, my whole take on this was I wanted to, to try to reach out and discuss with promoters to have this go on New York City or New York related indie shows nice so i've i'm in talk i'm not i'm not in talks but like i have a couple of friends that are on the indie scene mm -hmm. that know my idea and yesterday last year we had a little bit of a hiccup because you, know, you know me getting sick and everything yeah so it's been on, it's been on the back burner so i gotta try to back jump on that uh that, that bandwagon again and then if you see the side plates are new york's or um manhole covers with the cities on it we got Queens, we got Brooklyn, we got Bronx, and we got the other place. That, that, that's the one that doesn't really exist. <laughs> In the middle of New York City. Or, yes. You know, the city. I got to go with Harlem on this one because that's where I'm from. As much as I live in Queens right now, Harlem will always be where I was from. So I got to rep the main plate instead of the side plate. You can have it. It's, it is a, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope, though. I, I, when, when I sent this to go get made, I... Uh, did not expect it to come out so nice. And then on the back, I got... Ooh. Yeah, yeah, the, the skin. <laughs> Freaking W. And you bought that to World's End, right? I think you did. I did. It was the worst mistake ever. It what? was so hot, oh, and this belt yeah. is so heavy. That, and everybody yeah. got their coats, too. Yeah, because it was, like, winter. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, not, I'm never again am I bringing a belt to a, a, an event like, like that. <laughs> I feel you. Um, that's like when I bought my belts to the event, like for December, it was a little different because like I had it in like a, one of the belt cloths, like one of the right. WWE ones. I bought like the custom one in that and just carried it. I didn't like have it around or whatever. And I only showed it off when I like was in my T-shirt. But the only other time I bought a belt to a WWE event was in the summer. I can't I can't do no winter stuff like that. So it sucks also in the summer because you start sweating with it and depending mm -hmm. on the belt it'll ruin the leather so just That's be true. just a heads up it's a no it's a no because i have a i have a united states championship that's my that's my like event belt where i've brought it to uh royal the 2008 royal rumble i brought it to wrestlemania brought it to every single house show and televised show that i went to for wwe and um it's so beaten used that like the black on the leather is like Damn. peeling off. I feel you. How was that Royal Rumble in MSG when John Cena returned? How crazy was that crowd? In, I, I never realized how stacked that card was in general. Not even talking about John Cena coming back. Like Triple like, H, Umaga, Shawn Mike. Mm hmm. It was a stacked card, but then John Cena coming out at number 30. I wasn't a John Cena fan at the time, but that day I was a John Cena fan. <laughs> I remember watching that exact show at my uncle's house. I think I was like 12 or 13 at the time. And when he came out, I think I started yelling out, jumping up. I was like, John Cena's back. John Cena's back. Because <laughs> he had been gone for a while. And I guessed it too. I was like, number 30 is going to be Cena. Number 30 is going to be Cena. Boom. It was such a it was such an authentic roar of the crowd that it was like it was it was something else. I wish I was there, but um I think I was too young at the time anyway. Moxie. You were young. Moxie. Who is your favorite WWF wrestler prior to the lawsuit of the World Wildlife Fund? Well, the World Wrestling Federation. Uh I would have to say um like Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
You know, I know it's like everyone says Stone Cold or The Rock or Triple H. I Stone mean, Cold. but Mankind also is up there with number one. <laughs> Fellow New Yorker. Or are you talking about Block Logo? WWF. Yes, he was in the WWF era. Uh, if you're talking about Attitude, then yeah, Moxie, he was in that. Oh, he, yeah, he's talking about Block are WWF. Gold, okay, golden yeah. Era? Golden Era was a Bret Hart. Bret or Hart's British still. Bulldog. Damn, British Bulldog. I forgot all about yeah. him. Dude, it's, it's, yeah, I love the British Bulldog, man. British Bulldog is the best. No, no, you're good, Moxie. Yeah, the old WWF was the uh, like the 80s, early 90s, and then the Attitude Era was after that, and then Ruthless Aggression, which was like, you know, John Cena, Randy Orton, and then the modern era now, which is what we have currently today. So, yeah, so, Mox, there's the uh, the block logo, which was a straight block. It looked like a huge block. There was that WWF. That was early 90s, like Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Ted DiBiase, you know, like those guys. And then it went to the scratch, which is like, looks like it was just handwritten. And it, that was still WWF. The lawsuit was early 2000s, late 90s. So they changed to WWE probably in 2002, I think. Yeah, 02, 03, yeah. Yeah, the golden era yeah, was uh, the, the Hogan, the colorful characters. Yeah. Hogan, you know. Uh, um, the, junkyard Dog, Big Boss yeah. Man, like. Yeah, Yokozuna. Yep. Those, those... What's his name? The Butcher. You know, like Brutus uh, Beefcake, Bruce Ronnie Butcher. Piper, Shawn Michaels, Scott Hall. I'm oh, just Coco Beware. Roddy yeah. Piper. Roddy Piper was yes. also one of my favorites. Roddy Piper is a W man. Rest in peace to him. Yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the first Royal Rumble champ. Yeah. First Royal Rumble winner. With the with the whole two by four and all that. Like that was a time oh. where that was a time where characters were so unique too. Like it was less about like the wrestler's performance and more about showing off a type of character. Like uh like Kamala, if you remember, he was like the he was like the, the Ugandan monster or whatever. Um right. Coco Beware, we had Hacksaw Jim Duggan, um Doink the Clown, like it was all based on personality rather than like you know, now we see Ricochet doing 450 crazy splashes. Braun Strowman's like the strong man, all that. Like the dynamic has definitely changed based on what like, it was. This isn't going to sit well with a lot of the fans out there. Like I used to like the Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. But like if you go back and watch, he wasn't that good of a wrestler. He had energy and that's all that he had. His promos were fucking insane. Didn't make sense. But like he had the colors and he had the energy behind his character which pushed him and that's know, what people liked like they, yeah. they liked him running down the ring at like 500 miles an hour and like going crazy with the ropes like that's what got people into seats to watch him yeah and then like the splashes and all that that he would do the random splashes yeah the random splashes <laughs> um oh. good vibes i got you in a bit um so I'm going to try and make it fast. We are almost at nine o'clock. So I'll try to make this quick with the next few questions from chat. Um, so we'll try to make it like a fire round, I guess. So Perfect. only good vibes. Ax, what do you think of Logan Paul? I might be the only person or one of the only people that'll say this. I actually like Logan Paul. Mainly because he is trying to learn the business and at the same time, he's succeeding and learning. Very, 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 he's learning it very quickly. Yes, he's got the showmanship. He's got the agility. He's showing that he appreciates it, and he's he's hustling to. Now, did they put a title on him and throw him, you know, through the roof quick? Yes. Yeah, I think it's a little quick, but. But he's proving you know, why. That's he's what proving I proving it. Like, I think people can say what they want about him as a person, and rightfully so. Like, you know, he has a pretty controversial personality, especially with the whole Japan thing. But yeah. you can't deny yeah. his in-ring ability is absolutely wild. You saw him face Roman Reigns at Saudi Arabia. Like, even though he lost, they put on one hell of a show. The Royal Rumble spot with Ricochet, what he's been doing now, there is... Elimination Chamber, he was stuck in the, he was stuck in the, the, the tube, but he made it entertaining. Like, like, with you, the you, like Kevin Owens sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like who does it was, that? It was actually pretty funny, right? Like, like he put Kevin almost like a big ass like belly. I'm like, are you serious, bro? <laughs> this is so silly, but it but it's entertaining. It is, but it was funny, you know. I was like, all right, you know, he's he's, he's showing personality. And that's what that's what that's like, what brings people in. Like at the end of the day, like you can say what you want about him. He and, he's, and he shows up too. Like I know he hasn't he hasn't wrestled a lot, but you know when he shows up, he shows up. More he, more he than Roman more than Roman Reigns. <laughs> a lot more than that guy. <laughs> Quick, I was talking to Coley today, King Coley. Yeah. Um, and and I was just like, he posted up a picture of The Rock's gonna be at the next three Smackdowns. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, damn, The Rock has made more appearances in the first three damn, months of 2024 bro, than, than Roman. Roman Reigns did in 2023. Oh my. It's crazy because that's what's gonna end up being. The Rock 2024 showed up more than Roman 23. Yeah, it's so true. It's so upsetting. Like it's, but it's true. And like, I hope the reason that Roman is gone so long is not like a serious one because you know they've also had like those rumors that like he's fighting leukemia and he can't fight as much. So yeah. I hope that's not the reason because you know you never want to hope that like exactly. that's the reason. But like. You know, if he is on vacation, then I guess it also still brings people to seats because they want either want to see Roman or they're still just going to talk shit about him anyway. At the end of the day. Exactly. And Eric Bischoff has always said it best: controversy creates cash, and Roman mm-hmm. is causing a lot of is, has caused a lot of controversy and a lot of merch sales <laughs> and a lot of merch sales. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I. Even- I, I've even purchased a shirt or two, but don't tell anybody. I think 2022, 23 had like the most sales for like We The Ones, right? Like the We The Ones t-shirt was probably like the most purchased t-shirt for a while. But you know who's, you know who's, oh, you know who's beaten though? The We The Ones are like the Bloodline t-shirts. R-Truth. <laughs> oh, no, so yeah, R-Truth definitely. Listen, I, I, R-Truth is my boy. I we love, love the man. man. I freaking love the man. Do he not is, let this man go and appre- appreciate everything our troops doing now because you never know when he'll leave WWE. This man went to Austria instead of Australia. How the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> only he can make that shit up. It's so funny, but... And it's fucking great. All of his stuff's been good from, from little Jimmy to, you know, to now. And well, it's he's always been great. And I also appreciate him more because of like he's like he's a legit wrestler too. Like if you've seen him back in TNA, he was NWA champion. Um, he was TNA tag champions. Like he he did very well in TNA before coming to WWE. So he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and what killed me too was when he came back to WWE, and I think it was 2012. He uh, he actually had a really good run with. Like he beat John Cena, he beat Randy Orton. Like he was, he could have been given the WWE Championship. Seriously, yeah. But they never really, never came about. Nothing came out of it. I hope something comes up. Some I saw something online today where they were like, "Oh, appreciate Truth now because he's probably gonna go heel for the Judgment Day," and it cost Miz like the tag titles, like against the Judgment Day or something. I can see that happening. He's got he's got to have a huge part of the Judgment Day losing the belts. Like the cut thing was funny too. Like the money part, I remember that part with the sales. He was like, "You gotta be a member to to JD yeah. McDonough." Yo, and they jumped him, and I was like, "Oh, they were initiating they were initiating him. me, bro." I was dead. I was like, "Nah, bro, that's not how this works." All right, um, oh, for I'm gonna go to Luke. Um, I know Luke's, any, Luke's jamming us several questions over there. He's got a million. Do you have any, Do you have any belt signed by a wrestler? Uh, I got a couple. I have the twenty four seven right here signed by Kane. Nice. Um, that WCW championship is actually inscribed and signed by Sting. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. And my WWF winged eagle that I have at home that I have at uh, my mom's is signed by bret hart hell yeah that's freaking awesome so my ideal situation is to get that belt signed by rick uh by sean michaels on the other side and then i want to frame it and put it up so i have bret hart rick, sean michaels wwf championship you know that's freaking Montreal cool man. job type of ordeal you have no idea how jealous i am of all this stuff like it's, it's insane sorry don't be jealous <laughs> but like years, it, years of collecting. It, it's years the, of it, collecting. it comes with the collecting like i gotta bring one of my belts too though like so eventually one of these signings i do have to bring one of my belts but all but what i 
my my pet peeve is people getting belt signed by people who never held them, right? Yeah. Like if you're getting a belt signed, you kind of want the guy to to have held that belt. Mm-hmm. So it's like otherwise it's just a signature just to get a signature. Yeah, and then you lose value on the belt and the signature doesn't mean anything. You know, like like if you wanted to get that 24/7 title signed again, you would want to get it done by our truth. The 54 time champion. I would erase, I would literally erase Kane's autograph on it just so R Truth can have the whole belt. (laughs) Bro, the the best, like, I know it's not there no more, but it was such such funny segments. Like, it it makes me appreciate it more back in the day. I still want R Truth to come out somewhere, uh, like in the middle of a match with a referee looking for the 24 7 title. I still want that to happen. Dude, I had like I had this thought in my head for WrestleMania with something along the lines of that. Like he's going for a champ like somebody's going for a championship. Maybe the judgment day or like like some or dirty Dom's going for a title and then R Truth's just trying to help. He's like, Where's the twenty four seven belt? Nope. He's gotta bring it up. It can't just like disappear into the void. That title has to come up like in conversation somehow. Like if like if uh like if Dom was still North American champion, that would have went perfect. Like or like try to pin Dom in the most random time and he's like, I'm just trying to get the twenty four seven belt. <laughs> this is <what> doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um I am going to go to two more questions before we finish it off. But before I do quick fire question, favorite Jordans. Ooh, oh damn, that was a that was a switch up so i just got them they are the cherry 12s now nice. why okay. are now why are the cherry 12s my favorite you might ask i actually literally have them right like you see this you see a little bit black in this corner yeah it's right on top of this box i have my cherry okay 12s. they were the very first pair of jordans i ever got back in 97 my parents my mom bought me them loved them to death wore them to death and i they re-released in 2009 i didn't get a chance to get them and this year I was able to get myself a pair, my wife a pair, and my baby a pair. Hell yeah. So now whenever he's wearing them, I'm wearing mine. So we wear them as much as possible. So I have that little connection with them. That's awesome. And like, you know, like as a sneaker head, you want to hope that they would like find some interest in them as they grow older and as, like be like, hey, dad, I want to I wanna wear the, the so-and-so 12s or the, the ones and all that. The Cherry 12s and the Bordeaux 7s, which I actually have right oh, here. Oh, wow. The Bordeaux 7s. I, like, I haven't heard that in a while, right? <laughs> I know. It's been a while. And uh, my son has a pair waiting for him, but they're size 7. He's currently a size. No, they're size 13. He's a size 6. So it's going to be a minute for him to wear those. It'll it'll happen. And, uh, and yeah. then they're running out of the sizes anyway. They're going to need another size up afterwards, especially that's as they why, grow. That's why you can't. Yeah, that's why, like, he's gone through, like, 15 pairs of shoes in the past year. Not all Jordans, because I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. Children's Plays, Oshkosh, Walmart, you know. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, because it's, it, they, they, one, they get ruined. Two, they'll, he'll only wear them for, like, two weeks, and then he's already out of that size. Let me get to, all right, so final two questions. Um, elimination Chamber, your thoughts? Predictable, but good. And I'm happy that Rhea got her moment. Yes. I'm very proud that, of her. Yeah, that's that's as it, it was entertaining. It was a great show. Very predictable. When you watch wrestling for, you know, you know how it is. When you watch wrestling for 30 years, you know how it's gonna play out. Right. Plus, WrestleMania is so hyped right now, you couldn't have any major title changes because Rhea right. has to have her moment at WrestleMania too, you know, like like everyone's gotta have their moments. So Predictable but good, and so happy Rhea got her chance, her her moment to shine at home. Especially after her WrestleMania match last year with Charlotte, I I argue that that should have been main event. Yes, Before, that should have. Instead of the, I mean, the tag team match was great, but Rhea should have been main event. That would have ended it perfect going into night two. And with this with this WrestleMania coming up, I get you know we don't know how the two main events are gonna work out, but Bailey better be one of them. Cause she better she win. Needs, she better win. She deserves she her credit. Needs, yeah, she needs the win. She needs the belt, and she deserves that moment. 
to celebrate in, you know, in the middle of that ring at WrestleMania. Agreed. And if they don't, I'm going to be mad at damage control and blame Asuka and Kyrie. <laughs> exactly. I love Asuka. I love Asuka, but you know what? I'll blame her. <laughs> all right. So, um, first of all, Mike, thank you for being on here before we get to our final question. Um, for everybody that's in the chat, exclamation point guests in the chat, if you want to go ahead and follow Mike, make sure you check him out. Check out his Instagram. Check out his TikTok. And I even put the link tree. So, like, if I missed, like, a link, you can go check it out Dude, there. Um, he'll be live on Twitch hopefully soon. So, go check it out. Emilita, welcome in. There's definitely going to be booze if Bailey doesn't win. Oh, 1,000%. I'm going to be one of them. 100%. I'm, I'm going to be freaking yelling at the TV for no I, reason. I, I There's an 80% chance I'm going to Mania, so. Is it? Are you growing, really? That's a yeah, freaking I'm, W, I'm man. Yeah, I'm to a couple of the guys, and um, we're waiting last minute to see if we can get some tickets for cheap, on the cheaper end. Yeah, because. Uh, well, also, we're only two hours away. My mother-in-law's a half an hour away from, from Philly, so. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, let's see how it plays out. <laughs> I wanted to go, but like, bro, the nosebleeds are two, three hundred dollars. And then if you're gonna go both nights, I gotta pay for two people each. That's insane. Yeah. So I was like, eh, I'll wait this time and I'll like save save money this year so that way I can go next year. Well, I wasn't gonna go, but then my wife but like then the question came up with a couple of my friends, like with a couple of the guys that we know on like on 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 uh, IG, and then my wife turns to me and she goes Listen, April marks your one year free of cancer. This should be your present. It should be. You and deserve like, it. You absolutely deserve and that. I'm like, damn, girl, you just, you just, you just said that. Like, like, why, why? Like, I don't want to spend money, but now, now it's like, all right, now it's, it's out there. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably do it. Unless I somehow <laughs> hit the lottery. If I hit the lottery, sure. And then I'll be next. I'll be next to green. I'll be, you with me. I'll be next to green shirt guy. <laughs> um, all right. So final question of the night, and I know a lot of chat will probably have their opinions on this. So I want to know also what chat feels about this. What do you have to say for those who like to say wrestling is fake? That is the final question of the night. So. I could be blunt and I could curse, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I Shut the fuck up. No one's talking about your job. No one's bringing up your shit. Why do they have to... Like, why is that the age-old question? Movies aren't real. And I know that's the, always the, like the, the line they go down is movies aren't real, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, but you still enjoy them, you know? But, like, the, if you look up a... I don't remember who did the interview, but back in like the eighties, a reporter goes to, I don't remember. It was one of the, like the Texas wrestlers. I think I remember big, that. And then he, he, I think he slapped them, right? Shit out of him. Crazy. And, and the guy was like startled. Like what the hell just happened? And he's like, does that seem fake to you? Like, I, I can't stand people that do that because it's always at a, it's always in an interview. It's always towards a wrestler. And it's, it's more of a dick question than a shock question, you yeah. know? And uh, I've heard, I've heard different iterations, but like, you know, it's predetermined and it's a show, you know? And so I can't stand it when people say that though. It, it, it really gets, so Austin theory recently got That's, the guy's face. I was face. about to reference that. That was a hundred percent real. I firmly believe that he really got pissed because you don't say that to wrestlers that and there was nothing after that wwe didn't yeah. even promote it so you know that was like legit and like people just do that just freaking out they think they made a life-changing revelation to somebody who was a wrestling fan like i'm gonna hear that and say yo you're right they really don't pile drive each other like right like we were gonna hug them and like save like save ourselves from like fraudness and stuff venora i see you thank you for stopping in tonight yeah, I, I, it's it's so aggravating to hear it. I, um, but you know, we we live in a world full of dicks. You know, <laughs> what are you gonna do? We just, uh, I just, I just treat them with kindness, and they get mad anyway. So that's how you yeah. do it. Kill them with kindness. Kill them, kill them with kindness is right. Never. My my. Uh, Marcus Aurelius said this best. I think I posted it a bunch of times on my martial arts Instagram. 
you you can't control what's happening outside, but you can control how you respond. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the hate you get, um, you know, whether it's in this content creation world, you know as well as I do, everybody, it, it, it's a whole, it's all copy pasta out there. Everyone's taking ideas from everybody and it's just, and everyone's building it up, you know, like, and that's, and that's life though. That's how it is. You just can't, can't get upset with it. You just got to roll with it. Right. And that's, you know, it's my two cents. <laughs> well, Mike, we have reached, reached the end of the very first episode of the laying it down podcast. And I want to thank you again for being on for the night. And, uh, We'll definitely be talking after the stream. Um, before we end it, um, chat once again, exclamation point guest. If you want to follow Mike, that's all, all of his socials are there, Twitch, Instagram, and everything in between. You're more than welcome to follow him. Um, and for you, Mike, is there any last things you'd like to share with chat? You're, you can plug anything you want here. You can just, uh, if you have anything to share, whatever you'd like, this is your well, final I'm words. Plugging, I'm plugging the uh, the guest because that's pretty dope. I, I, I really appreciate you doing that. Yeah, man. Um, I got some stuff in the works. Like I said earlier, they got a podcast in the works as well with a couple of other uh, members of my crew. TCR EFED will be coming back for yes, WWE sir. 2K24. Super excited for the game. I'm going to be doing a live stream. Midnight release for that. Um, I'm, I took two days off from work so I could just stream that total. You know, through yeah. and through. Uh, I'm closing in on 30,000 followers on Instagram. Fuck that's yeah. That's like my... That's, That's my win. main, you know, my, my main source right now. Um, and uh, I'm just, just, just having fun. Just have, oh, and, and my, I have testicular cancer awareness charity, uh, charity event happening um, for the month of April, which I just got approval today. Chalkline is going to be working with me. Ooh, and freaking love Chalkline. When we meet our goal, we're going to do a giveaway um, for something very nice, which I'll release soon. Dude, that's, am that's amazing that you even have the ties to, to Chalkline. If y'all don't know what Chalkline is, they make some fire-ass WWE merchandise. One Winged Angel probably knows what I'm talking about in chat. Welcome in, brother. But that's it, awesome, yeah, man. Chalkline has come through numerous times through the past couple of years with just with me, you know, me in general, and with, like, the crew that we have, like, the little, like, belt crew we have going on we call it the belt click yeah um and the yeah, no, chuck line's been chuck line's treated as well and rightfully so you definitely deserve it you got all the freaking clout on instagram rightfully so too so like congratulations on almost like getting close to thirty thousand followers that is no easy feat at all that takes hard work and dedication so that is an absolute win on your side once again chat exclamation point guest go check out mike you will not be disappointed, especially for my wrestling fans out there. Um, and again, feel free to message me if there's any way I can help to promote the the stream too. I'd be more than happy to be a part of that or help out to share. But but uh, Mike, we are at the nine ten mark, ten minutes over, but that's totally fine. Um, I appreciate you hopping on, and I will message you right after. And thank you again for being here. It's been an absolute W and a W for episode one. This will be on YouTube chat eventually once I edit it. I'm going to try and put it on Spotify and maybe even for the op Apple heads, I will put it on Apple Music. Just for yes, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, All right, bro. Mike, have a great night. I appreciate you and uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good, brother. Peace out. Thank you again, everybody. See you later, man. Thank you, Chad. See you, you guys. Absolutely. And guys, for everybody that may be watching this podcast right now, make sure you follow the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so on the YouTube side. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Music. This is going to be everywhere that you watch your podcast. So I appreciate you guys. And we'll be doing our next episode very soon. So stay tuned for that.